it's Jermaine reporting for the Power Pound Boxing Show. I'm joined alongside Dean White. How you doing, champ? How you doing, fam? You good? I'm blessed. Good, man. I'm, I'm blessed, man. Thanks for taking the time to join me and have uh, a chat with me today, man. Obviously, we're at a Yoko cool show. Small hall show. How's it feel to be coming here and watching f- your hall show? Uh, I came here a few weeks ago. It's quite good. Obviously, a Mo prior show, so Mo's, Mo's a good guy. He's got um, a lot of time for me, and I got a lot of time for Mo. So uh, we was at the gym all day, and then I decided to come down and show some support. You know, I didn't even know who was on. What I do know is that there's not a lot of fights because <laughs> obviously the board and so on, and there was only four fights on the card. There's one left. So yeah, um, but it's always good to enjoy the atmosphere and soak it up boxing. Yeah, obviously you mentioned obviously not a lot of people here. Obviously a uh, lot, lot of I shows mean, on. I mean, yeah, the fights. Lot, lot of, the, yeah, not, yeah, there's not a lot of fights on. You got a show coming up in in, in November, is it correct? Yeah, November the sixth. Are you hoping that obviously restrictions are, are kind of lifted in a way that you can get more more fighters out there? Um, do you know what? I'm just really gonna put out the guys I've got. There might be a few other guys that come on the show. I might try and help out a few others, but um, I think I'm allowed ten fighters on that. But I don't think we'll put on ten. Maybe if. Um, if someone else wants to put on people on the show, I'll uh, consider that. But I'm going to put out the boys I train and manage and promote and stuff like that. I think we'll have a, we'll have a decent packed house. I think we're allowed six to eight hundred. It's not the biggest, but, you know, the boys do tickets and I'll do tickets. So I think we'll have a good night on November the 6th. But like you said, we've just got to be concerned with the government guidelines and make sure hopefully they don't start bloody playing about and uh, changing things and changing restrictions. So God willing, all goes well and we'll be looking for a good show a uh, pack show and a great entertainment you know for their fans how important is it for like fighters that haven't got a big promoter and stuff behind them to get out there and fight on these sort of shows and stay active obviously the pandemic stopped a lot of people fighting for about a year and a bit now but how important is it shows like this that fighters can get out there and your show with black boxing management that is how fighters can get out there and get a little platform it's very important the grassroots shows the small hall shows if you're going to learn your trade if you're lucky enough to fight on the big shows like warren and maybe uh, match room zone and stuff like that then it's great but then obviously you're under the microscope so every area you make is is shown and you know you, is seen and uh, exploited in terms of visual with people and um, you know everything's opinionated so when you're on there people's got a, an opinion so on these small shows if you learn here if you make mistakes it's all kind of like behind closed doors so when people when you do your job in here you're learning and it's a process towards like it's building the infrastructure when you're building a property. You know, as long as you put in the right foundation, you know, it'll build in the right fashion and the right manner. And uh, when you go onto the big stage, you're pre- prepared and ready. So these shows are always great. You know, Mo and um, Goodwin and I think Mickey Elliott was another one where Dillian came through that kind of um, door and route. Um, I think these are, you know, they're needed. And um, I'm going to be in that same lane. I'm going to try and put on a good, good show and a nice show and an entertaining show for people. But... Um, um, you know, I'm sure we'll find difficulties along the way. It's been a last. It's been a difficult two years, obviously with COVID. Hopefully, we won't get too much obstacles in the way. But you know, I'm sure, like with Mo, he had seven fighters on there. Three got pulled, and he's ended up with four. So it's a shame because obviously he's put a lot of money down for the venue and so on. So you know, he couldn't pull the plug. So I mean, like, look, this is you know the pinnacle of boxing here, the home Bethnal Green, and uh, there's a lot, there's a lot, of, a lot, of, a lot of talent and a lot of good guys have come from here. Yeah, you mentioned you mentioned about fights getting pulled. One fight, fight tonight was supposed to be fighting. Obviously, circus as they couldn't make it happen. Is John Harden Jr. Yeah. a fight? You know what? How disappointed are you that he's not gonna, he's not out tonight fighting? Do you know what? I think your health's more important than you know trying to put it on the line because boxing is a very very hard sport. And you don't want to go in there if you're not well and you're not fit. You're gonna do yourself a disservice trying to fight and compete if you're not well and you're not up to the task. So I think he's done the right thing, and uh, we're wishing him a speedy recovery. 100%. Uh, John, if you're watching, of Speedy Recovery, I know I spoke, I spoke to you, text messages as well, so hope he's all right. Let's talk a bit about a fight that's been announced this week. Your brother, Dillian White, the body snatcher, mm-hmm. Otto Wallin, tough, tough, durable fighter. Obviously, fight, he's man. been there with uh, t- Tyson Fury, very tough fighter. How, how confident are you that Dillian can get the winner in this fight? Do you know what? It's a really hard fight. He's um, Dominic Brazil, what is it, someone he beat recently as well. Listen, Otto Wallin showed he's durability, his desire, his purpose and he showed his skill set against uh, Tyson Fury and he showed a lot of his dirty tricks in there also we must add and not forget I mean look, Dylan's a, the can man so what you got to look at is he's prepared to fight anyone, anytime anywhere but th- this one is a, is, a, is a tall order, this guy is a southpaw I believe this is the, probably the first southpaw um, he's faced professionally and so on and I mean 
it's a great fight for fans. If you want to see a good dust-up, Otto Wallen is not going to come and lay down as we saw in that fight. And he's a strong, he's durable, and he's dirty. He's got dirty skills. I mean, not as a dirty fighter, but I suppose somewhat. He does dirty shit. But look, Dillian's got tricks up his sleeve as well. So this is another a look. This is another a part of his arsenal what we're going to see him showcasing fighting against the Southpaw and showing us something different and showing us a different look so I mean it's going to be an interesting fight he's a big tall guy rangy good footwork long jab and uh, and, and, he, and his game he's just a game opponent so you know I mean credit to Dillian for taking this fight because listen not a lot of guys would take this at this junction like he did against Rifetkin um, and so on and so we can continue going on in the list of all the, all the fighters he's he changes you know but um Look, it's a great fight. I'm looking forward to it. I'm sure the fans are looking forward to it. And uh, we just got to ride the wave. Look, we've got, we got a, 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 an immense four weeks of heavyweight battles. We've got AJ and Usyk next week. We've got the week after, is it Wilder, Fury? And then we've got Dillian and Wallin. It's endless. So we, we, as fans, we're sport for choice and what's going on. So, I mean, like, we just got to enjoy it, man. Enjoy the ride and hopefully it all works out how it's meant to work out and the tables work. And then Dillian can... Not overlooking anyone. Everyone gets the wins they deserve and then they can plan and go on and see what's, what's next. So you mentioned uh, Joshua. He's fighting next week, uh, putting his belts on the line against Usyk. Obviously, I want to ask you, you've done an interview recently where you think that you, you could see Joshua putting a fantastic performance and getting a, a fantastic knockout. Why do you see him getting a fantastic knockout? And why do you see Usyk maybe not being out there to uh, be out to cause a shock? Because I just feel like, listen, heavyweight boxing, anything can happen, but I'm rooting for Joshua as a, a London guy, as a guy on this side of the fence. I know him, I kind of speak to him, um, and I'm just rooting for him. You know what I mean? He, he's a cool cat, he's doing his thing, he's represented the sport of boxing globally, not just here. You know what I mean? Him and Dillian have done great stuff here, coming from where they've come from, and against all the odds, and you know, they've become, become ambassadors in the sport, especially Joshua. He's really, really at the top, him and Canelo of the sport, and then you've got Dillian up there, and the other guys, even Wilder, obviously, Tyson Fury and all these boys, but for me, I think he's just going to be too big and too strong. I've noticed Usyk kind of struggled against um, the American guy, begins with an S, slip me, is it? Oh, is it was it was it with a spoon? There you go. Yeah. With a spoon. There you go. Um, that, um, he he kind of struggled with him, and then even with Derek. I'm telling you, Derek was on to him in that fight. He did some really good stuff. He's he was an, a, an outstanding amateur, going into the pros, unified champion, and done it all. We've seen it, done it, and he, he's a he's a great ambassador for the sport as well. Coming up from Cruiseway, I just think he'll be a little bit too small. He's not going to be as sharp. He's not going to be as fast as he previously was at Cruiserweight. And Joshua, and since his defeat, he's adapted, he's changed. He's a little bit more, he doesn't give much away now. He doesn't give you too much opportunities. He keeps it long, he does it, he uses his jab, he steps off, throws his right, he does his long uppercuts and hooks, and he, he plays it just enough, safe enough, and he holds really well at the minute. So it's gonna be an interesting thing to fight. Don't get you confused, it's not a foregone conclusion, but I'm just going to be rooting for Joshua, and I have faith that him, and his team would have worked. They've got in many different sizes of southpaws at the minute um, in their camp. So we're, we're in for an interesting fight. But look, by no means is a foregone conclusion. Anything can happen. We can't write off Usyk because he's not been beaten. We haven't seen him beaten. We haven't seen him lose. Uh, so we know he's a winner. He has a winner's mentality and a winner's mindset. So he's going to come in and give it his all. This is a great opportunity for him now to ups, upset the apple car and shock the world, like Andy Ruiz did. But I, I just don't see it, and I hope it doesn't happen. Even if it does, you know, some people see it, I just hope it doesn't happen for the sport of boxing, for the UK and us, because we're the hub, we're the home, and we bring everything at the minute. We've got all the best fighters here, we put on the best shows, we've got the best fans, and uh, shout out to the fans, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but that's it, man. We, took, we talked a bit before we done this interview, uh, a bit about the Twitter spat between Dillian and Tyson Fury this week. Tyson Fury saying that once he gets rid of... Uh, Deontay Wilder, he wants to fight Dillian in December. Mm -hmm. Can you really see if both of them come through the fights, that fight happen in December? That. I don't see that happen. I don't know. Listen, Tyson Fury does a lot of talking. Hell of a fighter. Does a, he backs it up in the ring, but he does a hell of a lot of talking. What he says and what he does is two different things. So, um, you know, it's just talk as far as I'm concerned. Until um, both of them get through their fight, you know, and then we'll see what happens in maybe November if they do make that fight. I'll be very surprised. But hey, at the minute, I think it's just talking. You know I mean, brilliant. He's a good salesman. Brilliant, brilliant. 
obviously for the viewers watching uh, give us a bit of update about that your show again what date you've got a date coming up yeah, for your so show the show is November the 6th it's uh, going to be in London uh, possibly uh, Kingston um, you know we're going to try and put in a great entertainment um, I think tickets will be out next week we'll make some more announcements next week about the fighters who are going to be on and the stuff we're going to be doing just stay tuned follow at Black Box Global with a V on Instagram and Dean White underscore Dean White on Instagram and Dean White uh, I think it's underscore eight on Twitter and um, but I'm sure you know where we are and you know follow the guys man I'll be posting them up thanks for your support and log in tune in if you want to come down DM me hit me up hit the boys up and let's get busy man brilliant Dean thank you for your time bro thanks very much man all the best cheers thank you